The night everything changed, it's 2014, a quiet night in Kiev, Ukraine. Snow falls softly on empty streets, the kind of night where even the shadows seem to sleep. A lone figure stands in front of an ATM. No card, no pin, no keypad interaction. The security camera captures it all. A man, unremarkable in every way, standing motionless. And then, without warning, the machine comes alive. Bills start pouring out, hundreds, thousands, like a mechanical waterfall of cash. He doesn't flinch, doesn't look around, doesn't show a hint of surprise. He calmly gathers the bills, $200,000 worth, zips up his bag, and vanishes into the night. The camera keeps rolling, recording nothing but falling snow. By dawn, the same scene unfolds in dozens of cities across the world. Manila, Moscow, New York, London. ATMs hemorrhaging money, no alarms, no forced entries, no explanation. The damage? Over $1 billion siphoned from global banks. Yet when authorities investigate, they find something chilling. No vaults were broken into. No security footage showed masked robbers. No fingerprints. It's as if the money simply vanished. The world's biggest cyber heist had begun, and it would change banking security forever. The art of digital infiltration. Banks are supposed to be impenetrable fortresses. Vaults lined with reinforced steel, guarded by armed personnel, monitored by thousands of security cameras. Multi-million dollar security systems, biometric scanners, motion detectors, every weakness anticipated, every vulnerability addressed. But Carbon Act knew something others didn't. A fortress isn't breached by brute force, it's undone by its weakest point. And in the digital age, that weak point isn't a door, a wall, or a vault. It's human nature itself. Carbon Act didn't need dynamite. They didn't need safe cracking tools. Their weapon of choice, a simple email. Somewhere in Eastern Europe, a bank employee starts their morning shift. Coffee in one hand, mouse in the other. The morning routine, check emails, clear spam, review notifications. A new email catches their eye. Subject line, urgent, client complaint regarding missing funds. The sender looks legitimate, a familiar bank domain. Attached is a Word document, a seemingly routine bank statement. The employee hesitates for a moment, then clicks, and just like that, the fortress falls. The silent invasion. The virus doesn't announce itself. No blue screen of death, no system crashes, no flashing warnings. It slithers through the network like a digital phantom. Each step calculated, each move precise. It burrows into the system, planting itself deep inside the bank's infrastructure, and then, it waits, patient, silent, watching. Every keystroke recorded, every login captured, every transaction monitored. It learns how tellers process withdrawals, how managers approve transfers, how IT teams handle security protocols. For weeks, sometimes months, the virus does nothing but observe. Learning patterns, understanding workflows, mapping the entire financial ecosystem until the hackers know the bank better than its own employees. And that's when they strike. Masters of deception. Carbonac's genius wasn't in breaking through firewalls. It wasn't in crafting sophisticated malware. It was in becoming invisible. They didn't force their way into the bank's systems. They became the bank. Using real employee credentials, they accessed genuine accounts, moved actual money, authorized legitimate transactions. Everything they did looked normal on paper. Every transfer followed proper protocols. Every withdrawal met security requirements. They didn't trigger alarms because they followed all the rules. They didn't raise red flags because they played by the book. They just happened to be playing with someone else's money. The three-pronged attack. Carbonac didn't just rob banks. They reinvented bank robbery itself. No masks, no guns, no getaway cars. Instead, they orchestrated a symphony of digital theft, each method more ingenious than the last, each attack more sophisticated than its predecessor. One, the ATM ballet. Picture this, midnight in Madrid. An ATM springs to life unprompted, bills shooting out like confetti. A man casually collecting the windfall. No card inserted, no buttons pressed, just money appearing out of thin air. This was Carbonac's ATM jackpotting scheme. They didn't hack individual machines. They hacked entire ATM networks, programming them to dispense cash at precise coordinates, at precise times. Their money mules, ordinary looking people, would simply wait, the right place, the right time, collect the cash, walk away. No violence, no confrontation, just perfectly timed choreography. Two, the invisible transfers. Big heists draw attention. Million dollar withdrawals trigger alerts. So Carbanic thought smaller, 
much smaller. They move tiny amounts, $50 here, $100 there, spread across thousands of accounts. Each transaction so small it looked like a rounding error, but multiply that by tens of thousands of accounts. Across hundreds of banks, over dozens of countries, those pennies became millions. By the time anyone noticed, the money was long gone. Lost in a labyrinth of international transfers, bounced between shell companies, converted to cryptocurrency, then back to cash, then back to crypto, until its origin became impossible to trace. Three, the ghost employees, their most audacious scheme, creating phantom workers, not just fake names in a database, but complete digital identities, employee ID numbers, tax records, salary accounts, performance reviews, attendance records, career histories. These ghosts existed everywhere except reality. They attended virtual meetings, submitted digital reports, received regular paychecks. One bank paid over $1 million in salary to someone who never existed. The perfect employee, never late, never sick, never complained, just quietly collected their salary month after month, year after year, until someone finally noticed the empty desk. The digital arms race. By 2016, Carbanic had evolved. Their original malware, simple but effective, gave way to something new, something deadlier. They called it Cobalt, named after the chemical element known for its strength and stability. Cobalt was a masterpiece of malicious code, faster than its predecessor, more sophisticated in its attacks, harder to detect, impossible to stop. One bank lost $10 million in just three hours. Another saw its entire network of ATMs turned into cash fountains. Corporate servers fell without a fight. Security systems watched helplessly. This wasn't just theft anymore. This was financial warfare, and the banks were losing. The spider in the web. For years, they searched. International task forces, joint intelligence operations, global manhunts, looking for a ghost. Then in 2018, a breakthrough. A single cryptocurrency transaction. One tiny mistake. Leading to a name. Dennis K. Dennis Tokarenko. Living in plain sight. A luxury villa in Alicante, Spain. Swimming pool. Ocean view. Private security. The life of a successful businessman. Except this business was theft on a global scale. The Raid. March 26, 2018. Dawn breaks over Alicante. SWAT teams move in silently, surrounding the villa. The moment their boots hit the marble floor, they knew this was different. No weapons cache, no panic room, no escape tunnels. Instead, laptops filled with banking Trojans, servers humming with stolen data, hard drives encrypted with banking secrets, 500,000 euros in jewelry, two luxury cars in the garage, and the crown jewel, $124 million in Bitcoin. A digital empire run from a Spanish villa by a man who never robbed a bank in person. The aftermath. But even as Tokarenko sat in handcuffs, questions remained. Was he really the mastermind? Or just another piece in a larger puzzle? Because even after his arrest, the heist continued. New malware appeared. New banks were hit. New millions disappeared. Half of the stolen billion remains missing. Lost in the digital ether. Some say it's locked in forgotten crypto wallets. Others believe it's still moving, still bouncing between accounts, still being laundered, still funding new operations. The legacy, Carbonac didn't just steal money, they changed the game. Showed the world that the biggest threats don't come from men with guns, but from shadows in the network, phantoms in the code. Today, banks spend billions on cybersecurity, install cutting edge protection, train employees to spot phishing attempts. But somewhere, someone is watching, learning, adapting, planning the next big heist. Because in this new world of digital crime, the next billion dollar robbery might already be underway. The questions that remain. Where is the missing $500 million? Who were the other masterminds? How many banks are currently compromised? How many more Dennis Tokarenkos are out there? And most importantly, when will the next Carbonac emerge? Because in the world of cybercrime, the clock is always ticking. And the next heist, it's not a question of if, but when. What do you think? Where do you think the missing millions went? How many more cyber gangs like Carbonac are operating right now? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more deep dive investigations like this, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because in this digital age, the biggest crimes leave no trace at all.